going on guys? <clears throat> it's a beautiful late January day. It feels like spring uh, here in northwest Indiana. It actually feels really nice. So I was cleaning up my porch, which was covered in raccoon fat, and uh, just tidying up the house. Odds and ends, I'd like to get out of the woods, but uh, I don't have time for everything, so I thought fill the time with a little video. I'd like to get away from knives and just talk about axes today, and actually just one axe in particular. Uh, and that's the the GB Gransfer's Brooks or Gransfer's Rooks. I don't I don't know how you want to pronounce it. I don't care how you want to pronounce it. It's this axe right here. Okay, it's beautiful. The end grain orientation is is actually quite nice. A little bit of an angle doesn't necessarily need to be straight vertical. Some people say that's even more ideal. <clears throat> Don't have the run out. Um, cane sharp, real sharp. Some people complain about theirs not coming that sharp, and I wasn't shaving hairs with it, but it was sharp. All right, if it's not as sharp as you'd like, uh, you know, rub rub something on it. Look, see, almost cut myself. Rub something on it until it is sharp the way you like it. It's got this little crack right here some people complain about that but why don't you learn about axes okay that's how it's supposed to be totally natural totally normal that's just part of the process uh, it's hung well it's tight the handle is gorgeous it's got a beautiful finish it's everything that you would see online in the pictures as you ooh and ah on Facebook ooh, ah, and in the bushcraft groups um, you pay a lot of money for this beautiful Swedish axe. Um, you get this sheath, comes with it. It's kind of, it's, it's adequate. It's certainly not as nice as you would like it to be or as I would like it to be, but it's not so bad that I'm going to complain about it. It's something I'll continue to use, uh, and then someday I would probably look to replace this. <laughs> that being said, I'm about to violate... Uh, a bunch of people's feelings, right? I'm going to feel like James Jager when he said all guns should be Glocks and all 1911s suck because uh, I don't like this axe, right? don't like it. I go out in the woods. If I hike five miles, uh, ten miles, I don't, I don't want to deal with it. I've taken it out. I don't really like it. Uh, I think the handle is too long. For this size head, I think if you want to take it out, you should have a little bit heavier head on it. I mean, it's not bad. It feels fine. But I think everything about this size um, is wrong. My, I don't like it. I think the small forest axe uh, would be a better choice. Uh, I think this handle is somewhere in between what it should be. I think it should be shorter 23 24 inches if you're going to have this size head or should be a little longer and stretched out into more of a boy's axe at about 28 inches with a two and a half pound head that's what maybe a three pound head I mean that's what I would go for this isn't ideal for me but the the biggest thing about this like any axe is as beautiful as the handle can be and as well finished as it as it is and as as sharp as I've made it and have now been bleeding, trying not to bleed all over my handle, uh, an axe really revolves around the piece of steel on the end of it. And this is, this is my problem with it. Aside from the length of the handle and the ratio of, of weight to length, all that jazz, is uh, I don't like the profile. Now I know every country is different and everyone has their own uh, indigenous woods which their bits are made to to work with but to me this is a more of a felling profile it's thin so I've taken this out I've been chopping wood and it sticks and I don't want it to stick that's, that's too much work and it sticks about every other time maybe it was the, the particular wood but I've taken it out a few times and I've chopped more than one piece of wood with it and it just keeps sticking 
And you know what I don't want it to do? I don't want it to stick. Because you know what I don't want to do? I don't want to wiggle it. I don't want to wiggle it. I mean, if you want to talk about dancing, I can wiggle it. But I don't want to have to constantly wiggle my axe to get it out of the wood. Huh, it's getting kind of getting kind of dark. Here, I'll turn some lights on. I wasn't anticipating that. <clears throat> oh look, bleeding all over the handle. All right, that's why we put wax on it. Um, I don't like it. It's beautiful. I don't like it. Okay. Your mileage may vary. You may very much love this axe, uh, and it is quality made. There's no doubt about it. This is a. Uh, a fine tool. It's not what I want. It's not what I like. It sticks when you're chopping and it's too thin to, to split. Right? That's not my thing. Right? That's right in, the, right in the zone of it doesn't do anything that I want. It's too much work to chop and it's a pain in the butt to split. Right? I don't like it. So, just as a point of reference as to the kind of things that I do like, so that you can't understand that I'm not a total uh, axe idiot and I'm just running off at the mouth to piss people off. Right here, okay? This is a German piece of steel on a really, a really good looking handle. Uh, it's got to be a vintage piece of uh, wood. It really looks great, okay? It's a good looking axe, smaller, 17 inches. All right? It's beautiful. I don't like it. Okay? It's great on my wall. It's okay, but it's not good enough for me to grab on a regular basis, so I will say I don't like it. I mean, I love it. It's beautiful, but I don't like it as, as a, a tool that I'm going to use all the time. It's too thin. It's too thin. Okay? It sticks. All that jazz. Here's something I do like. This is a vintage uh, stiletto. So nothing nothing of note. You know, it's not noteworthy or it's not worth a bunch of money or anything like that. It's just an old piece of steel. Kind of like the American Standard in some ways. It's, it's certainly not low quality, but it's not top of the shelf, anything like that. It's stuck on a, a pretty fat handle, and which could probably use thinned out a little bit. But the difference is, look at the, look at the bit. See how fat that is? All right, it tends to be a little more vintage American, you know, with the, the girth of the bit. All right? You know what you can do with something this fat? You can, you can chop with it. You can still chop with it, all right? Is it going to go in as deep? Is it going to get as much bite? No. But you know what it's not going to do? It's not going to stick. It's going to throw wood, and it's not going to stick. I can't, I can't complain about that. And you know what else is great about a bit like this? Is it'll split, too. So when I'm out in the woods, any day, all day, every time, I will take this this thing's got to be older than I am, okay, and I'm 40. I will take this piece of steel with a stamp on it that's not really worth anything versus this very expensive uh, Swedish boutique axe. Now, I don't actually like saying boutique axe because an axe is a tool and most people aren't using them as collector's items, but... Um, and I, and I think it's a, on the more expensive side, but I don't think it's unreasonable the price that they're, that they're asking for their tools. So, <clears throat> but just the comparison is that this will chop and split, right? And that's what I need because I don't, I don't need two tools. I don't need two axes or two hatchets or one hatchet and one, well, however you want to classify it. I don't need any more than one of these in the woods. So you pick one that works for you that will both uh, chop and split and that's what you take.
because it's an extra two, three pounds. It might be an extra three and a half pounds, okay? But this for me, as beautiful and as expensive as it is, and as much as I like holding it and whispering sweet things right here, beautiful. And as much as it makes him feel good as a man, it doesn't do any of those things that I want it to do out in the woods as well as I would like. This right here is a vintage double bit plum boys X or a cruiser, I guess you would say, a 28 inch handle. Got it out of the flea market for 10 bucks. Cleaned it up some, finished the handle, still a little rough. You know, I'm not, I don't care if it's got a few little nicks in the edge. You know why? Because it still chops and it still splits and it looks awesome. I love this, okay? But it's too heavy to take out on the trail for any distance at all. It's something I would take out into a field and I'd be doing some light work, um, light to medium work uh, for somebody splitting wood, chopping wood, or, or whatever you need. That's a good one to take with you if you're just going from the car to the field and doing some work and back. Whatever, yard chores, it's all good. I would still take I still take this double bit over this Scandinavian. All right, this is a good size for something light, light duty in the yard. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna take my ten dollar vintage plum. All right, so let's talk about. Uh, what's this right here? All right, and I'll probably do a more in depth review on this later. This right here is a good example of what I really like okay this is the woodcraft the council tool woodcraft pack axe on uh, the 23 or 24 inch handle alright look at the bit notice it love it I burn the handle it doesn't come like that from the factory obviously we could go into the sheath on a, a different a different day <clears throat> I had this uh, equally expensive HB Forge. Okay. So I have some nice axes here, and I have more in the other room. So I'm not a total ingrate when it comes to talking about these things. And I don't want to sound like a butthole. But at the same time, I don't really care. This might be great for you. Okay. It certainly is a well made tool. It certainly is a great company and I read their book that came with it and I like uh, everything about the company and the things that they do um, but I, I just can't get behind the profile you may have had different experiences than me uh, but you probably more than anything have a different preference than I do and that's okay so I want I'm not gonna pull a James Jager and say all oh, GB axes suck because I don't believe it's true. I'm not going to say that all axes should be American vintage or all axes should be council tool because I also think that's equally ridiculous. What I am going to say is that while this is a great tool, a great company, that you may want to take into consideration what you're going to use it for and what your preferences are while you're out and about in the woods. I don't think it chops well as well. I think it sticks. It's too it's too annoying. It's annoying. And I have a hard time splitting with it because it's so thin and it gets stuck even more when you're trying to split with it. Like I don't want to I don't want to bury an axe into a a piece of wood trying to split it and then have to grab a, a chunk and baton through it. That's that's bogus. Um now I, I would consider something like their small forest axe or their wildlife hatchet you know as a carving tool or something really light duty I would consider something um, larger than this though not for attaching to your pack so I know the internet is ablaze with Gransfors Brooks axes the small forest and the wildlife in particular and everybody now that bushcraft is super popular and everybody wants to go camping and everyone wants to take pictures too close to the elk and get mauled. Like, 
Okay, it's something to to take into consideration. Okay, All right? You can you can be on Facebook and you can it's like this. You can see the snapshots of everyone else's happy marriage because they're only posting happy little marriages. Right? Happy, everything's great, and you can say, "Well, our our marriage isn't like that. Why don't you love me like that?" And then you can get divorced, and right? You can feel great about life. Uh, you can do that with this ex. You can see all the happy pictures, and you can think, wow, that's, that's great, that's glorious, that's certainly worth $150 or whatever you spend on it, but take into consideration, okay, your preferences, what you actually need, what you're going to be doing, and if you're going to like something like that or not. This is 26 inches. This is, this is long for a pack axe. You know, if you're going to be building a shelter, you should probably take something a little longer, a little heavier if you're going to be doing serious work. Right? You're talking about, you know, this whole armpit thing. I mean, it's not bad for someone my size, but I still think for heavier work, you may want to consider uh, something with a, a little more weight on the head. So, I know the internet loves these things, and there's probably a good reason for that, but I'm telling you that you don't need to spend $150 on an axe just to find out uh, that what I told you is true. Maybe you don't have the same experience as I do or as I've had but you may very well get out there and realize that hey that hillbilly knows what he's talking about. Alright so that's the conclusion alright they make great stuff. How I do however think that this is not their best piece okay uh, I actually like very little about it for my use. Again, I think it's too long. Um, I think that if you're going to stick with a 26 inch, that you should add something bigger on the end. You should make a heavier head. But really, I think you should either expand this and make it a full-fledged boy's axe with a heavier head, or you should shrink it down to 23, 24 um, and keep this size, okay? It's too long. I know the small forest is 19, uh, so maybe there's too much overlap there. There's nothing wrong with 19. 19 inches is, is great. It's beautiful. It's one hand. It's two hand. All right, so maybe that will work for you. The problem is, for me, is that the bit is still going to be similar to this, and this profile doesn't work for me. It may work for you. All right, I don't want to crap on these too much because they are great. They are fantastic, I guess. Um, I just, you know, I'm just waiting to trade this off. I'm just waiting to sell it to somebody because I'll never use it. Uh, so we'll talk more about axes later, about some of my axes and my, my go-to axes, right? I don't want to collect a bunch of stuff. Uh, I only have a few things that I reach and I grab for, and we'll talk about those later. This, however, while it is a great axe and a, fine, uh, a finely made tool, it is not something I would reach for. Um, just wouldn't reach for it. All right? You guys, peace out. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know, click, click the like if you want. You can subscribe if you want. Uh, but I got to go do some other things. And... We'll see you next time.